Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. So today I wanted to start off by taking a look at the LCK standings because today we're going to be talking all about T1, uh, a new update to their situation. You know, their ongoing roster changes up until this point, they have tried a total of nine different rosters during the spring split, which is absolutely insane. I mean, really a number that I would guess has probably never been close to rivaled by any team pretty much in League of Legends history. I mean, that's absolutely insane, um, but they are actually going to be rolling out a 10th different lineup potentially this weekend. That is the rumor. That is what it is looking like. Uh, and right now, as you can see, the, the mixing and matching of rosters has so far not been wildly successful for T1. They're currently sitting at fifth in the LCK. They're sitting at seven and seven, which isn't terrible. It's not that bad bad it's not good especially for a team like t1 who has this history this pedigree their fan base that expects to be constantly competing for titles constantly going to worlds constantly going to msi uh you know they they expect big things um but the lck is tough it's a very deep very challenging league um and especially when you're constantly trying to swap in and out players uh it can be really really difficult to form synergies to gain trust to gain uh teamwork camaraderie playmaking uh so there has been a lot of backlash with fans analysts pretty much every Everyone in the community talking about T1 needs to decide on a roster for better or for worse. Even if they don't pick necessarily the best player at every single position, they need to decide what's going on. Um, so, uh, and I, I mean, the other big thing is that people really, really like Faker. Obviously, he has a huge fan base. People love watching him play, even um, even though, you know, recently he's maybe not been as dominant or as spectacular as he was early on in his career, especially during like the peak SKT days uh, and all that. People still really care about what's going on with him. People real, uh, still really want to see him playing and want to know what's going on with him. So this video is also going to be like a big Faker update as well. Um, but before we get into that, make sure you take a second. Make sure you smash that like button. I would appreciate it so much. really helps out the YouTube algorithm. Uh, one of the best, easiest, and most awesome ways to help support my channel my content if that's something you're interested in doing with that being said let's get right into this um so this story kind of took a weird turn i know we had talked about previously um how uh, they weren't really sure what was going on with faker he hadn't played in a couple of weeks he hadn't scrimmed in a couple of weeks it looked like maybe t1 was content with riding out closer for the rest of the season um then this reddit post came out uh, there was an interview uh that came out with the t1 head coach where one of his quotes in it was that faker had asked to be benched um which a lot of people thought was really weird because uh some people just didn't even believe that because faker had talked about uh how yes this whole situation is stressful yes he kind of hates going through this constant swapping uh, of players during like scrims and during games and stuff like that but at the end of the day he still really wants to play and he hopes to play and he expects to play so then for uh denny to come out and say that faker has to be benched people were like eh, what's going on there that doesn't make sense and then for that interview to have just came out and then you know now the new uh kind of rumor that's out there is that t1 is going to be on their 10th roster this weekend and it's going to be with faker back in the starting lineup so i mean this sort is so so confusing stuff really doesn't make sense we've heard previously that maybe faker uh, and denny don't completely see eye to eye on how the game is to be played which then has some people saying, yeah, I mean, your coach is your coach. If you don't agree with your coach, that sucks, but you guys got to be on the same page. You know, he's paid to coach and analyze and set up a game plan, all that stuff. And then people on the other side being like, man, if you're disagreeing with Faker about how to play the game or what's going on or some kind of, some kind of strategical concept or, or something going on in that regard, maybe you're wrong. Maybe you should start thinking differently. I mean, so it is really, really weird. And, and yes, I get uh, being a coach for Faker's team has to be uh, a really, really daunting task because yeah, who wants to disagree with Faker and uh, you know, who's going to like come out and say that and stuff, but it, it does get really, really weird. But uh, as far as this new roster that T1 is going to be rolling out, this is the big news that it looks like Faker is going to be returning again. We have not seen him in a couple of weeks. Uh, T1, as we saw, they've been really up and down this whole season. They're sitting at seven and seven. They have a lot of big, important games coming up, and we're going to talk about that in a bit. But this roster of Canna, uh, we're not sure exactly who the jungler is going to be yet. Faker, Teddy, and Caria. Um, so that is really, really interesting. And how the, this rumor and speculation and stuff is kind of coming about is is the fact that these are the players who are not playing solo queue during scrim blocks so of their 10-man roster the other players are uh you know have solo queue games recorded during the scrim blocks and stuff which means they're obviously not scrimming at the time faker 
uh, doesn't have any solo queue games during these times, so it's more than likely that he's been scrimming with the team this week. Closer is playing solo queue, so it's uh, entirely, uh, you know, possible, or not even possible, it's just, it, it is a fact that he has not been scrimming, at least in some of their scrim blocks, if not all of them, um, so this is what is leading Leaker Zoo, who, who has been a pretty consistent and reliable source, honestly, the whole season. He covers LPL and LCK really, really awesomely. He does a great job talking about how it seems like Faker is going to be back returning this weekend. Teddy's back in there. Um, this is kind of one of the uh, T1 rosters and lineups that most people expected at the beginning of the year. Again, with a 10-man roster, it's so easy to mix and match any piece out of that. Uh, and when you lose a game, it's hard to pick out exactly whose fault it was or what the problem was or what combination of players maybe would have been able to do better. But people are hyped up for this lineup. People are excited. Um, but again, even if this lineup is the most talented team, the most talented players, uh, I mean, we can debate that uh everyone is going to have a little bit of a different opinion there still them only getting to play like a couple scrims together and then maybe a couple games together that is so difficult when you're going up against teams who uh the same five guys have been scrimming practicing playing on stage together for the whole season i mean again the synergy the teamwork the camaraderie the trust the playmaking the shot calling everything uh, it takes time to develop and it is just a big big disadvantage for t1 uh, right now and that's uh, uh, why most people think this team is sitting at the middle of the standings because if you go back to the preseason projections and stuff and and just based on what this team how talented they looked on paper a lot of people had them top three or four in the lck a lot of people had them top two just right behind damon uh and yes that is preseason you know that's there's a lot of variables that we don't know about before all that stuff but still people thought this team was a very very talented team they thought they were going to be very very good and again they are seven and seven right now in the lck which doesn't seem that bad but look at their schedule they still have games coming up against gen g drx and hanwha life so they're sitting at seven 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 and seven right now without having played gen g a second time without having played drx a second time and without playing hanwha life uh, a second time as well and i believe if we scroll down here they yeah they lost 2-0 to a freak of freaks earlier on in the season as well so of these four series they have left it's possible that they lose all four. These are four. Uh, it's not like they have four cupcake games left or something. They're sitting at seven and seven, and that's not after they've played all the good teams. That's before they've played all the good teams. There's a real possibility that T1 ends up eight and ten. Uh, am I doing my math right? Yeah, eight and ten, seven and eleven. You know, something like that, which would be a very, very disappointing record and could have them finishing uh, well below fifth place that they are currently in in the LCK. Now, yes. If they go on, if Faker comes back and they go on some insane run where they knock off Genji, they knock off DRX, they knock off Han, uh, Hanwha Life, they can make a run up to like, I think like four, third or fourth place still, which would be pretty crazy, which would be insane. And then uh, they, at that point, they would have insane confidence going into the playoffs, obviously, and they would be looking really good and they would have everybody hyped up and they would then have as good of a chance as anybody as making a run in the playoffs. But of those two scenarios, again, I think T1 is in a very, very tough spot. I think Faker is in a very, very tough spot. And with this schedule, this is these are some of the best teams in the LCK. I mean, again, we can look at the standings uh, and we'll see that Gen G is in second, DRX is in third, and Hanwha Life is in fourth. They're playing in their next four series three of the four best teams in the LCK right now. And that is a that is a tall order. And a tough task for any team uh, in the LCK, obviously. But again, also a team that is constantly shuffling their players, constantly shuffling their roster, and really needing some wins because they, again, they expect and always want to be one of the top teams in the league. And to do that, they're going to have to win a lot of these series at the end. So I think people are going to be hyped up and excited for the return of Faker, obviously. People have been calling for that. Like, especially if T1 is going to be a middle of the pack team, people want to see Faker play. He is coming to the end of his career in the next couple of years at the very most. You know, he has uh, the military time that it is on the horizon whenever. Um, he's also just a guy who's been around for a long time and he's done everything there is to do. He's won the LCK. Um, he has won the world championships. He has done it all and especially if he's starting to play less and less, uh, people, you know, are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel for the career of Faker, which is very, very sad. So people do want to be able to enjoy every minute, every moment they have left. And uh, they want him to go out fighting. They want him to go out with a bang. They don't just want to see Faker getting benched in the middle of some random spring split and just going out on a whimper. That would be very uh, sad, especially with a career like Faker's. Um, yes, obviously, T1 is a new brand now, but they, they still have rolled over most of the same SKT fans. 
fans and everything in the same fan base but the ownership obviously wasn't there for all of uh the skt kind of glory days and stuff so maybe they don't feel as loyal to faker or whatever but the fans definitely um want to see him be a part of what's going on at t1 for the foreseeable future and and especially right now um but yeah uh, just a really weird situation for him and after last time when we talked about how he hadn't played for a couple of weeks and stuff there was all this rumor and speculation of was faker going to be retiring at the end of spring split at the end of the year was he going to try and leave at the end of spring split was he going to try and leave at the end of the year would he go to a different team would he start streaming you know all of this craziness going on um and still not a lot of our questions are getting answered obviously him getting to play once again is a better sign as far as him potentially staying with t1 um for another split for the rest of the year or maybe on into the future who knows exactly but this split's not over. They could still uh, end up benching Faker next week, putting closer back in. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how these last couple of weeks play out, how the playoffs play out, who gets to play in the playoffs, how well they do, how well T1 does as a team, and how well these next couple weeks in the playoffs go, especially in the spring split. But even on into the summer could really be a huge, huge factor in determining what the future holds for T1, what the future holds for Faker, and what exactly is going to happen in this whole situation and in this whole mess. But it's definitely a really, really interesting interesting story again a ton of people completely disagree with what t1's doing and it's kind of really frustrating and angering and maddening for them and i i totally get it and i totally agree but it's also what makes it so interesting like what is going on with t1 what are they doing this week what's gonna happen next uh and it gets people interested if nothing else and and that is always a good thing i think but obviously a bad thing for the players being involved because they're talking about how stressful it is how much they hate it how much this sucks and there's nothing they can do about it you know they're under contract this is their team this is their situation again Again, maybe at the end of spring split, if people decide they don't want to go through this again, they can find a new team, find something else to do, start streaming. Who knows? It's going to be crazy. But for T1 to be as talented as a team they are and kind of wasting it in such a way is really disappointing. So I hopefully these last couple of weeks go good for them. Hopefully they can figure something out um, for themselves, for the future of Faker, and for all the T1, LCK, and just League of Legends fans out there who want to see some of the best players in the world play and want to see some high quality games because that would be awesome at the end of the day. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you enjoyed it. I would appreciate it so, so much. It really, really does help out my channel an insane amount. Leave a comment down below. What do you think about this decision to bring Faker back into the starting lineup? Do you think he's going to do well? Do you think he's going to do bad? Uh, do you like this roster? Do you like a different roster? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on anything we talked about in today's video. Subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.